Welcome. Welcome to the, uh, the August the 21st Vision Committee meeting. And uh, would you call the roll, please? Councilmember Cochran? Here. Councilmember Gonzalez? Absent. Councilmember Hamrick? Here. Councilmember Jaquez? Here. Councilmember Meisner? Here. Councilmember Turner? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Smith? Here. Mayor Troutman? Here. So this evening we're going to talk about um, the, the takeout. Ms. Smith, would you like to take it from there? Tell them what we're doing here. Well, we'll have everyone introduce themselves that's up at the dais. And also, I want to welcome everyone that's in the audience today. They're all interested parties in its environment and recreation and working with um, BLM and the tourist industry. And I'm really excited to see those that could come. Did the 6 o'clock time make it easier on your schedules to, to attend? Good. Usually they last till nine or ten, so don't. <laughs> <laughs> Not tonight. Though. Not tonight. Mr. Meisner. Is this specifically about the Black Hills property? Um, yeah, well, it, not specifically. No. So what it is, is we've been attending some meetings where the Black Hills property has been brought up as potential partnerships where they could help with boat take in and take out and things like that. But there's other opportunities of cooperation and collaboration as well, especially with getting funding. And also there's a ditch um, crossing in the Arkansas River that would go at the Black Hills property site too that would need some attention for tourism. And I think it will be better if these guys take, take the lead on this. But it kind of came down to uh, often questions of, uh, well, what do you think city council would support? What do you think of city council? I said, well, maybe you should come to city council, introduce yourselves and let them know who you are and what you do and what the possibilities are looking in the future together and maybe collaborating on some potential projects. Okay. Would you like to introduce yourselves and sure. then we can start out? Um, my name is Bob Hamill. I'm the vice chairman of um, the Arkansas River Basin Roundtable and the chair of the Enviro Rec Committee. And that's where we um, had Mayor Pro Tem Ashley Smith came and visited with us and we had this on our agenda and uh, we meet here in Canyon City. and. Um, Besides that, I, I also represent the Arkansas River Outfitters Association as their executive director. And um, we just wanted to come today and um, talk about how we can potentially support this whole project. And um, Chelsea Nutter to my left can, can talk more about that and I can follow up on some of the other things that we potentially can do and who we are. Do you, do you want to jump in before I... Okay, yeah, I'll do okay. that. Okay. <laughs> Tim Payne, uh, Fremont County Commissioner, so I'll represent the county, but also I'm on the Arkansas Upper Arc uh, uh, Water Conservancy Board, and I'm also on the uh, Arkansas River Roundtable, and uh, I, I attend the uh, Environmental Recreation Committee meetings quite a bit too, and this is uh, particularly the uh, Oil Creek uh, Ditch uh, Diversion Project is something I've been working on since I first got elected, so it's something that's been talked about quite a bit. So. Uh, that's my interest here. So I'm Chelsea Nutter. I'm the executive director of the Arkansas River Watershed Collaborative. We're going to throw a bunch of names at you. Um, I apologize for that. And I wanted to start off with just giving you a little background on who we are, what the roundtable is, um, and you know, kind of why we're here today. So in 20. Uh, 2005, um, legislature po passed the Colorado Water for the 21st Century Act, and this created nine basin roundtables throughout the state. So here, uh, which covers Canyon City, so it's everything from Leadville down to the Kansas border, where the Arkansas River Basin. And in that basin, there are representatives from each county, from um, municipal use for water, agriculture, uh, environment and rec, and also watershed health that meet as a round table once a month to discuss water issues. Um, also in this act, the IBCC was created, which is the Interbasin Compact Committee, and this is to talk, uh, to have representatives from each of those basins get together and talk about um, interstate compact issues between each of the river basins in the state. So that's where it all started. Uh, the next step was they did a statewide water supply initiative to look at the supply and demand gap between how much water we have and how much water we need when we look at population growth, 
um, you know, water needed for irrigated agriculture, also for recreation and the environment. So during that process, they asked the roundtables to create a basin implementation plan. And during that time, um, our roundtable, the Arkansas Basin Roundtable, started looking at what projects are out there and started developing these committees to kind of do that research and also identify projects that we could get on the ground, how much they would cost, um, and how we would implement them moving forward. So during that process, they created a, a watershed health committee, uh, which then grew into the Arkansas River Watershed Collaborative, which I'm the executive director of. And we are now a 501c3, so we can bring in you know, funds and grants and we act primarily as the nonprofit arm of the Arkansas Basin Roundtable. I believe we're the only roundtable in the state that has done that. Um, so there's a lot of other roundtables that are looking to us uh, for guidance. And then within <laughs> my organization, we have other committees, like the one that Bob chairs, which is primarily looking at what projects are out there, needs, issues, helping us identify, prioritize projects. Um, within the basin that are specific to environment and recreation. So my, um, what, what I'm focused on right now, um, I, I just recently took this position, I've been in it about six months, <laughs> um, but I've been a part of developing what we call, what we call it ARWIC, I'm gonna say that for short, um, since the beginning, is mm -hmm. to make sure that we meet with all of the different um, stakeholders and communities within the Arkansas Basin. So there's a lot of folks that we wanna talk to, uh, but what we wanna do is first come to you, say what are your needs, uh, what projects are out there that you're interested in, um, is there support for it within the community, and then what we can do through my organization is help uh, with you know, stakeholder engagement, development of those projects, identifying funding, and also helping with implementation, if that's something that the local community wants. So I want to be really clear in saying that you know, I'm not here today to tell you what to do, but to really hear from you if there's something that you would like our assistance with through, um, through RWIC. The other thing that's going on right now is we are updating our basin implementation plan. So this is a great time to look at what projects are out there and we could get them on the list of identified projects, which then helps uh, those projects kind of move to the top of the list when funding becomes available. And we do have several funding sources that we can tap into through the Colorado Water Conservation Board. Uh, one of them is the Water Supply Reserve Fund, and this is funding that the Basin Roundtables, um, first they get to decide uh, what projects they, projects they feel are worthy to move through, and then they go to the state to get funding. So there's funding available there, um, and that's pretty open. Uh, primarily what they're looking for are projects that, ha that are collaborative in nature and who bring in multiple water interests into a single project. There's also Colorado uh, water plan grants available. So in 2015, the state developed its own water plan. And right now, um, there, there is funding available to help implement that plan. So within that plan, there's different buckets of funding available, one of them being environment and recreation. There's one for storage, irrigated agriculture, um, supply and demand. But you could tap into those funding buckets as well. And um, the other one that's available that I think um, could be of interest to Canyon City for any projects you're looking at um, is a uh, watershed restoration program. So this one really focuses on um, stream restoration, stream management plans, um, post-fire and flooding, and um, what other projects do they do? I guess that's primarily, primarily it. Um, but yeah, there are resources out there. Uh, we have worked with the folks at the state for many years on developing these types of projects and securing funding for different communities to help meet the needs of that community. Um, so in my, uh, as I've been moving around talking to different stakeholders, I've also been using the Environment and Rec Committee to help me in those conversations. And I think since they are here, meeting with representatives in Canyon City, there's been a lot of interest in seeing if there are needs or projects in this area that we may be able to come in and assist with. And so through these conversations, I've heard many different things. Um, some of those, I think originally it started with uh, restoration or working on developing, 
Yeah. Yep. Um, working on, uh, there was some there were some concerns over the Oil Creek ditch as well as the hydraulic ditch and safety, boater safety. So we have looked at that. Um, we're still continuing those conversations. I don't, I, I wouldn't say it's, um, it's on the list of things that we're discussing. Depends on who you're talking to. There's a lot of moving parts with it. I have talked to the ditch company and I know with them right now they feel like they like the way their diversion works because they can get in there and change it when they need to, to you know, hire it up so that they can divert the water that they need. But they're still very open to having conversations with us. So I, that's something that we can do through ARWIC is help with those um, conversations between different stakeholders. Um, the other one that keeps coming up is Black Hills. We've heard about Black Hills. I'm still learning about it, so you all know more about it than I do, but this opportunity uh, potentially where it sounds like this, uh, the city may purchase Black Hills. And when I talk to the Environment and Rec Committee group, uh, you know, they have an interest in that as, you know, could it be a recreation uh, site, boater takeout area? And um, I think that that committee would really like to support any type of project that uh, would support recreation through Canyon City. Do you want to add anything to that? Um, yeah, we could add some things to that. Too. One thing that is happening with a lot of the grants, too, is we just got a rundown of where some of the grants were going in the state. And Enviro Rec is not getting what some people feel is like um, it's not that they're fair share, but there's room to still give money to that bucket of Enviro Rec. And this project, the overall project, fits right into it. So I think it would rank pretty high um, once it made it to the Colorado Water Conservation Board for final approval. And um, I think what we look for, and I, I also help with the Needs Assessment Committee, and what we find is the projects that have multifaceted win-win situations for a lot of different people, those are the ones that get stamped and move forward. And th this whole project here with the River Walk and Black Hills and the Oil Creek diversion and you know a potential takeout or access, river access, all these things touch a lot of different water users and a lot of interest groups. And so there's great potential for this thing to move forward. And the big thing is, is we just don't really know who's championing this cause. And I think that's something we wanted to, like Chelsea said, we want to give you information about what the resources are, but now we need to know who's gonna run with this and who's gonna sort of champion the cause and, and put things together. Um, so that's kind of what we're trying to look for in the fact finding. Um, Commissioner Payne, do you want to make some comments as well? about the diversion and also about the need for championing well um, my thoughts on this as, as studying this for several years now uh, as Chelsea said this is a, within the uh, Colorado State uh, water plan and it's in our basin implementation plan it's also the the Oil Creek diversion is also in the eastern Fremont County trails master plan it's in the Arkansas River corridor master plan that you guys put together. This thing has been talked about forever, it seems like. And to me, what sh we should do, or what I would recommend, is separate Black Hills from Oil Creek Diversion Project. Make them separate. Uh, we don't know if Black Hills is ever going to happen, quite frankly. Oil Creek could happen. Uh, but it would, there's a lot of moving parts. Uh, it would take an expert like Chelsea to put it all together. Uh, I've been trying to champion it, but uh, I had the brakes put on me because it's really not a county project. I was going at it from a water project, from the water side that I'm all the boards I'm on there. And, uh, but however, the county would like to help with the project because we see it as a good uh, community project, uh, multi-use project, uh, getting the rafters down there safely while number one, uh, Oil Creek Ditch still gets their water. I mean, that's still number one. Uh, and I think that's what they 
talk to Chelsea about. Anyway, that's that's what I, and, and there is uh, grants out there. Chelsea's gonna do some work for us uh, farther down the river. Um, it's not 100% yet. Uh, we have to do some work, the Corps of Engineers says we have to do some work on flood mitigation around the Reynolds Bridge. And I'm pretty sure it's not, like I said, it's not 100%, but we're gonna employ Chelsea to do that in her group. Um, Chelsea is, uh, is uh, kind of modest. She was the project coordinator for Upper Arc Water, and I've, saw, I've seen the project she's done. So uh, I'll pat her on the back a little there on that, but uh, she is the expert on these kind of things. Is there somebody that can better explain to the council in general in, in terms of that, let's say we've never heard about this, the Oil Creek diversion, and explain what it's about? I, is that okay if Manny yep. comes up? Go ahead. And what it entails and why it is important. Does he know anything about this? Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Manny knows you would nothing like to about water. <laughs> sorry, Manny, I just, you know. You would like to know what about the Oil Creek? Oh, I, I, first of all, my name is Manny Colon. I am on the Oil Creek Ditch Board, as well as the Hydraulic Ditch Board, and I do serve on the round table with Mr. Payne, and I do serve on Upper Arc with Mr. Payne, and I am involved with DARCA, which is Ditch and Reservoir Company Alliance, and I am involved as a director on the round table board, and I can go on and on with Colorado Water Congress and everything else. That's the material here. What we're looking at is, a very unsafe uh, diversion at the Oil Creek, and it's a real high liability risk as far as I'm concerned with boaters, and, and I see more and more of these people with inner tubes and air mattresses going through there, and pretty soon we're gonna lose a life. And when we do, I worry about the board and their responsibility, and they aren't doing anything about the diversion. And I've raised an awful lot of stink about that and haven't gone anywhere because it's worked for 150 years and done just fine. But we haven't had the traffic through there that we're having now. So we did get this put on the round table agenda and I, th I was very happy to get it there, but it's stalled and it's been stalled for an awful long time. And if I look at things, I go back, we had a person by the name of Gary Barber and Gary Barber came up here and met with me numerous times, and we did come to the city and talk to Tony O'Rourke, and we laid out a plan with him as to what could be done with the two, they're not islands, but they're little pieces below the diversion of the Oil Creek that could be wonderful takeouts, and we've talked with our recreational people and uh, the upper part of the river, about how good that could be as a takeout, a lot better than, quote, Pink House and other places. We put on the table where the city could develop those two areas and probably charge enough for the boats coming out of there and the people to more than offset and cost of putting in a little bit of money to make this project work. And the Oil Creek Ditch Board does not want to put money into it, but I believe that they should. And if we could do this properly, it could be a real benefit to the city of Canyon City. If you go to Salida and look at what they've done with their boat park, you have a better situation here with the drop and elevation from that diversion on down and around the corner that we could have the best water park that you could possibly ever believe right here in our backyard. Uh, I've seen numerous things set up with uh, diversion points where they use airbags. They can make those airbags 10 feet wide. They can elevate them at different levels and different widths of the river and set up slalom courses for boats or kayaks or your stand-up boats. And it's very intriguing to see what some people are able to do. I think that we're really missing the target by not jumping on this and making it work for the city of Canyon. Manny, I'm looking at the chart here, and I, I've been down in that area. There, there looks to be a sluice that comes out and then goes down into this concrete where you pick up your ditch water. Are yes. you talking about back here where the, it looks like there's, right, right back here at the very beginning? 
mm -hmm. putting an, uh, an intake there or coming down farther? I, uh, when you go into the first part of the curve at the very top of the river, there's a diversion diagonally across the river. It's almost, it's not 90% across the river, but it's at an angle. Right. I, we've done several things over the years with various groups and fractured rock is not what you want to put in there. You want to put round river rock, uh, something that you aren't going to get foot entrapment if somebody falls out of a boat. I would rather see rubber dams in there where they're slick and nice and you slide over the top if you fall out of a boat. If that was all set all the way across the river, then the Oil Creek Ditch Company could always get their head of water by raising the dam a little bit higher or leaving a boat chute so some people could get through without an incident. If you leave it the way it is right now, sooner or later somebody is going to get tangled up in there. Uh, our Fremont County Parks or, uh, Rec District has told me about numerous accidents that have been happening there. Uh, it goes on and we're just very lucky to this date. Um, as you see that diagonal across there, that's where you would put your original uh, diversion so that the Oil Creek Ditch could always get their water uh, timely and make their assessment. Below that, you do have a, a drop, a considerable drop. And um, in my younger days, that's where I learned how to kayak uh, with Scott Skinner, who was an extremely good kayaker. Excuse me. Are you looking that at stretch that could go from that dam all the way down around the corner. And that's where you put the park. A darn good park. And you'll bring people here for that. So is it a two part or is it one thing or is it two? You talked about there where you looks like the white water is, that's your part of your diversion to run it down the channel. So that's where your first coffer dam, inflatable coffer dam could be? And then you're talking one farther down or there at the entrance because then you'd have a, you'd be able to raise or lower it to fill your ditch or raise it or have a safety precaution for someone to take an, an intake to take rafts out. Is that? Right now, agriculture has the control of that ditch or the river. If you set it up properly, they would always be able to get their right. decree. What's left over to go down the river could be used for recreation. And there is a chute there. That chute that you see going through there has a very large drop at the bottom end. Every once in a while, somebody who is macho wants to run that. And they run that just to see if they can. And I know because I was young once. Uh, you can run it, it is runnable, but it is very dangerous. And it depends on the number of four by four boards that are in there that bulk it up to, to make it work and get the water down the ditch. That could all be corrected right there with, again, an inflatable dam. The ones across the river are more set up to make sure you get the head of water down to the point of your gates that are taking your intake. So that splits the little island, so to speak, or an area below there of which you could take boats out and very easily make a, a real good um, place to remove boats from the river and a park where people could be to watch various activities on that river. Okay, so you're talking about an area below your intake for an Oh amount. yes, it oh, turns. Not, not above, it, below. It still has a drop all the way around the corner. Right now there's some old cement okay. slabs that are laying in the bank there to hold the, hold the bank and they're atrocious. It's like putting junk cars there as far as I'm concerned. And uh, if those could be removed and put river rock around the corner, uh, you could actually put bleachers up there if you wanted to or, or just make it very similar to what you have at First Street and it would be very, uh, very attractive. Yeah, I, it's kind of what I thought some time ago would be, and, and this is 
a good, I think, a good depiction proposed. So, um, any questions of council, Meisner? Um, you had mentioned development in an area. What area are you talking about? Really, I'm talking about the, it could be the north and the south bank, but preferably the north bank, right where you see, I, I don't know what picture you have, but what you're looking at, but there is a, the return flow that we use that is excess water drops over the top and flows down a little channel. That, from below that channel all the way down to what was below the old cooling towers is a nice level area that could be used for buses to come in and pick up uh, passengers and do other things. I've, I've gone through this and looked at it and showed it to Tony O'Rourke and others. Uh, I think it was a very sensible plan. Uh, you could have an engineer in the whitewater industry look at that and I think it would be absolutely gorgeous right there. But, it, but it's still on Black Hills property. That would be, I, I would assume, yes, that's Black Hills. And upstream from that, that island is all Black Hills. Right. Yes. But they're not in the business anymore. Why in the world can we not talk to them? We can, but I mean, it's... I think we're going to get the property. There were some environmental issues, possibly. That the environmental have. issue is the ground that the plant mm -hmm. and the coal set on. It's not the bank of the river. Granted, yeah. when they had cooling ponds there, they had silt mm -hmm. in them. If you want to go back in time, they used to take the silt and blow it back into the river with high-pressured fire hoses. That was stopped. Then they had to clean it out with a front-end loader. So that ground there, there's nothing wrong with it. It could be, quote, subdivided and a part pulled off of it. You'd have to have access to go across their property to get into that, but it could be done. Well, but you, it's all, you, we're going to get the whole thing. Well, then go we're after the get, whole thing, and then you got we are, it. We are currently talking to them about it, and the process is a little slow, but it's going to happen. I don't see why it would. Great. I'd love to see it. It will. It will. Um, He's is more there, opportunistic than I am. No, I... I see. Maybe talking about getting access now would be a good conversation to have too. Yeah, I think we can have that conversation yeah. because of the other things that are going on there. Um, but this is my opinion. So, are there? So, if you had a, a group to get together, it would be the Ditch Company and WKRP, the BLM. Who who would that be to go forward? Because I don't think there's anybody here that objects to what you're saying. I don't. Does anybody here have a a problem? Well, yeah, because you got to get the Black Hills. Well. Everything's based on Black Hills, and until that mess is cleared up, I mean, uh, Commissioner let, Meiser, let John speak. He can tell you more information technically. Commissioner Meiser, did we sign a contract with Black Hills to produce our energy here for the next ten or twenty years? Is there a contractor? Not Have we done that yet? Really. Not that I'm aware. No, you're talking about the franchise. The answer is no. Right, we have not done it. What kind of leverage do you have with None. that? None. We don't have any. Now think about it. You've got any. leverage there that you could say, we're going to go to Excel. We're going to go to San Isabel. We're going to go to somebody else if you can't work with us. Well, well, the, come on. So, yeah, go ahead, please. <laughs> Let me just, I want everyone to understand that whether we have, whether the voters approve a franchise agreement or not, the Public Utility Commission tells us who our provider is, and they have told us that Black Hills is our provider. So unless another utility company can establish in front of PUC that they are failing to meet their obligation to provide energy to this area, we will not get another provider. So we d really don't have the power to say, we're just gonna go with someone else. As a city, we can't make that choice. That's up to the Public Utilities Commission. All right. Does Black Hills know that directly, and can't you sure. use that to, you know, kind of sweeten the pot? Well, I mean, they know that they're going to be the provider, really, no matter what okay. happens. So we we don't have leverage in that way over them. And, and Do you I don't have think leverage in a rate that you're paying? You aren't paying for well, anything. We don't set the rate either. PUC sets the rate. Right. So I wish we could set the rate, but and we I also don't have any leverage to say anything about the rate. I don't think it's really about needing leverage. It's just about getting through the process with the attorneys and EPA requirements. And yeah. so let Maybe me, let me speak about that. I, the, um, the, I've got 
uh, for you, those of you who don't know, I, the, I have a strong background in environmental regulations and cleanups. Uh, and the, when the Clark Station was proposed to be torn down, uh, because there were recognized environmental conditions that existed on the site, which means, the, you know, translating that out, what that means is that they used certain materials there. There were certain um, um, conditions that were recognized, like oil spills, things like that, the certain materials in the plant. Uh, they did a phase one environmental assessment uh, to assess those conditions. They, they did determine those conditions were there, which triggers a phase two environmental assessment. A phase one is kind of qualitative. There are some samples that are in sampling that's involved. Phase two is more quantitative, uh, and they, they took uh, groundwater samples, uh, they took soil samples. Uh, based on the results of the soil samples, uh, they determined there was an area there with uh, PCB contamination uh, at the surface. They conducted a limited uh, cleanup of that, that small area um, uh, for, for uh, polychlorinated uh, biphenyls. Um, the, but it was, it was just surficial. It was only, they only went down like about six inches or so. Uh, they did not under, address the underlying contamination. Uh, in addition, the, the method that they used to install water monitoring wells on the, on the property, they used a, what is called a direct push rig. Uh, and what that means, it's just kind of like a little auger uh, on a, that can be mounted on a small, a uh, very small tractor size uh, chassis uh, that you auger into the soil. Uh, the issue with that, it's not a rotary drill. It does not get down to bread, bedrock necessarily. Uh, and so their wells are too shallow uh, to determine whether there's um, contamination at depth. The kind of materials they used at the site, uh, PCBs, are what they call sinkers. They're heavy, heavy compared to water. So they're uh, dense, non-aqueous phase liquids, or d apples, and they sink. Uh, they, what they do is if, if you spill some of that, uh, they go down to the bedrock and sit on top of the bedrock. Uh, their wells were not uh, adequate uh, to be able to determine whether there was any of that contamination there yet, uh, uh, whether there was any there or not. The, the, so there's further site characterization that needs to be done. Um, in addition, the city has discussed with them, um, you know, possible acquisition of the property. Uh, and if I was a private person, you know, looking at investing in that property, I wouldn't touch it with a 10-foot pole uh, under any conditions. Um, it's, it's just really, really contaminated. Uh, the Black Hills provided us with a draft plan that they would, if we acquired the property, if the city acquired the property, that, uh, that they would uh, require us to follow. That plan is called the Materials Management Plan. Uh, and the plan basically says, Canyon City, you can do what you want on the property, but if you do as little as turn over a shovel full of dirt, you have to have a registered professional engineer there to assess the contamination uh, the possible effects on workers and the possible effects on the environment. And so, so the, you know, like I said, if, if, if this was someone proposing that uh, John Hamrick buy this property, I wouldn't touch it with a 10 foot pole. So there are some serious issues that need to be addressed. And that's what Councilman Meisner is referring to uh, by Black Hills uh, for, for uh, you know, if there's going to be the issue is, is, is if you, if you, even if you just have boaters going there, if the boaters have kids and they get out and, and dig a little bit in the soil or something, there's, there are no protections in place uh, uh, to um, prevent them from coming into contact with contamination. So, so those, are the, those are the environmental issues at the Black Hill site, and they're, they're, they're pretty serious. Uh, shifting away from that, I'd like to, the, what, so the proposed, we've seen kind of a proposed, um, you know, um, work on the river. What is, what, what is the, the cost of that? Or has anybody put numbers to that to see what, what that might be, uh, what that might cost? All right, John, there's two things here. 
Number one, let's go back and talk about Black Hills first and contamination. Sure. And then after that, if I can remember, we'll go back and talk about cost of what we're looking at or what I, what I see there. As far as the contamination is concerned, I know that we're very concerned with our environment now and what's gone on and what's there. Uh, that was a coal-fired power plant and they did have lots of coal there, they had lots of oil there, they had many things there. I did work there for four summers and my father worked there for 35 or 40 years. Um, <clears throat> those people are alive and lived a good life. Uh, nobody that I know really died from something that was there contamination wise. Uh, I see some of the front end loaders now and some of the things they do. I don't know how far they drilled down, but that could be scooped off, I'm sure, and down to bedrock if you wanted to and, and fill it back up. My gosh, we send more sand out of this county and out of this city and don't get paid for it. Well, let's put some of the side of the hill, cut the Indian's foot off and grind it up and put it back down there and make bedrock and put it back to where it was, clean, nice, wonderful gravel. Uh, I don't see, I don't know how serious, it's not, it's, it's not the mill over here producing uranium, it's a power plant. And yes, there's oil in the ground. I'm sure there's some spills there. There's some other things. Uh, you look at these reports of our wonderful engineers and environmentalists and our tree huggers and our earth muffins and you say, my God, we can't live there. Well. That plant's been there for a long time, and yes, I'm sure there's, quote, contamination. To what degree, I think it's ridiculous what, we're, what we let stop our government today, or by our government, stop us from doing and developing what needs to be developed. So that's just my opinion on that. I think there's ways that we could take that property and make it, quote, safe, not only for the people walking across it, but the people coming down the river through the diversion. And That's Manny, my opinion. I understand that. I, I'd like to say in response to that, Manny, that it's, it's not what, what we need to do. It's what Black Hills needs to do. Well, I've talked to some people with PUC before. And Black Hills and PUC are two different agencies and entities. One's a private company. One's a governmental company. Black Hills will point their finger at the government and the government will point their finger at Black Hills. I've been in the middle of a couple of those squabbles and I, will, I can attest to them. Uh, both of them are kind of speaking out the left side of their mouth. And it upsets me that they use each other and build on it. And we are surely paying a lot of engineers, hydrologists, and water people to make decisions that I think are absolutely asinine. Okay, Frank? Uh, we understand what you're talking about, but that's why John and Caitlin spend numerous hours working late with Black Hills to get to the facts that we will need as a council whether or not we look at acquiring Black Hills property. And some of the things that John talked about are those things that we have to look at, okay? Because there is a cost to those things, there is danger to those things. So, you know, we won't just jump into something because it has a lot of potential, which it does. And nobody's saying that the riverfront doesn't have potential, all right? But here's the other thing, too. Everybody looks and talks like this where the city can do this, the city can do that. You know, the city does not have unlimited funds. And I take it there are grants, but are all the grants going to be able to handle the cost and everything that's going to be involved? This is going to be one of those projects within all the things that we've done that we have to look at a lot closer than a lot of people think it's so simple to do. It's not that simple, okay? And before we, anyway, me as a council member, before me as a council member would say, let's go ahead and just take it. If I'm not satisfied with what things that John brought up and just stuff like that and that could happen out there, I am not gonna vote to spend the city's money for something like that. Because we wanna make sure when we do spend the money for it, it's gonna work. The river is great. What's happened so far with what we've been able to do, 
right there with the Whitewater Park and all that. That's been great. I love it. Everybody loves it. We have a lot of people there. But we have to take in consideration all of the liability factors that would come with the project that we're looking at. And, and that's what I would look at when we look at this decision for whether we acquire that property. And then once we acquire that property, if we do, then looking at some of the things that we can do with that river basin to make it that place that everybody says it could be. And I believe it could be. But there's a lot of steps that have to be taken before we can just jump into the water. Mr. Hawkins, I appreciate your comments, and I understand where you're coming from. All I'm saying is we need to really look at PUC, and we need to look at Black Hills, and we need to look at the requirements, and we need to look at the results of what they're trying to say is, quote, contaminated, and how serious that contamination may or may not be. And, and that's what I okay. mentioned with regards right. to us looking at it. If it's, right. if it's cost prohibitive, why would we want to spend the city's money to get something that's cost prohibitive? I understand okay. that. I think we're but getting off let's track go here. One, one step further than that. Well, I that. think we're getting off track here. Manny, I appreciate it. I really do. Mr. I guess I do. I think we're getting off track. All right. Is anybody on the panel? Tim, would you like to talk? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Why can't we go in on the south side and just work on the Oil Creek ditch diversion? Once we get Oil Creek board on, on board, that's going to be key. We have to get the Oil Creek ditch board on, on board. But why can't we go out on the south side? You never touch the, the uh, Black Hills property. I don't know. Maybe we can. Maybe we can. Will? You don't know. Right? Yes. Have well, Will, have Will speak on this. Will. May I? Yes, you may. Um, so a couple things I just wanted to back up. You guys talked about price. Somebody brought that up, and I don't think that was addressed. So just to go back to that, I'm not 100% positive on this, but I believe on the canyoncity.org website, I know that WKRP helped with putting together the plan for the current river park that we have now. Mm -hmm. And we had the engineering firm, S2O, go upstream and look at the Oil Creek diversion. And they put together, I believe, a certain percentage, maybe 50%. Uh, they did some of the engineering. Warren might be able to tell me on that, but there was a certain percentage that we paid them to do. When I say we, well, WKRP, but through Canyon City. Canyon City paid them to do this. I believe that's on your website, the prices that they came up with. Now, we did, I don't think we went 100% with that, but it gives us a really good idea of where the cost might be. Back to what Tim was just saying, I don't see any reason whatsoever that we truly would be nice, but we don't have to have Black Hills. Um, I believe Tim said that we can do that separately, and that would make this whole thing a lot easier and more streamlined. Down the, down the road, that'd be wonderful we could include Black Hills, but it would be a win-win for both the city of Canyon City, the users of the Arkansas River, the citizens, and the Oil Creek Ditch if we were to go in and enter that property, put in, um, I believe I pointed out, or Tim brought it up to you guys, there's kind of a rough draft of, th I believe it's three drops, yes, that right there. That could be constructed with the permission of Oil Creek, which is obviously the, the, the linchpin here. We have to have them on board or it just doesn't work. They get their water. Um, I think Manny was talking about these inflatable uh, dams those would work really good. I don't know if, I know some of you may or may not really understand how the uh, coffer dam works. They actually go in at low water and push material up to divert the water. They use small aggregate typically with some large holding in there with the idea when the river comes up, it washes that away. They want it to wash it away so that it doesn't remove that island that you see in the pictures. If they lose the island, then they lose their intake and the ditch company has some serious problems. So they purposely make that coffer dam weak so that when high water comes like we had this year, it washes it out. I would presume that here shortly, the Oil Creek will get back in the ditch and they will build that up so they can hold their head. I know that's gonna happen at the Oil Creek ditch here shortly as well. Um, that's just what's been going on for the last 150 years around here. But if we were to use those air mats like Manny was talking about, 
that would save the ditch company the cost of coming in every year, sometimes maybe more than once a year, to build that up because they could control that, that dam, if you will, by adding air to it. Increase, you know, in low water, you increase the air, the dam comes up, it's safe, the water goes into the, in, it goes into the intake. They leave a boat chute which allows users of the river, whether they're private or commercial, to get past that. When the water spring runoff comes, the water gets high, we lower the dam, the water passes by, the island's protected, the ditch company's still getting their decree, but it's not eroding away at their, their island. And so, from my point of view, that's a win-win for everybody, the users, the city, and then we can actually make, the, make that dam part of the Whitewater Park, which we've worked all so hard on, getting it up to First Street, and with the addition of the, we'll call it the Old Creek Project, it would tie the whole um, Whitewater Park together. It would literally start at the Oil Creek Ditch and go all the way down to 4th Street, or actually down to Black Ridge. We would have something that probably very few communities are even close to doing. We'd have a very long Whitewater Park. There is space on, uh, back to, I believe it was Jim's question about uh, development on that site. The city, I believe, owns a, a small strip where the, the river walk is that runs up the south bank. Right there at the, in, at the intake, there's a fat piece. One time years ago, we looked at it as a potential boat uh, put in and take out that would have been kind of what we're looking for at Black Hills. It was determined that it's kind of a small piece, but there's still that piece there, and I'm pretty sure the city owns that because Bob in Aroa, we looked at that and I, we did a lot of work and I think we turned it over to the city and they took the ball and ran with it, if I That's remember right. right. That's, That's right. been five, six, seven, eight years ago? <laughs> okay, yes. Thank you, Andy. Yes, we spent, Aroa spent 10 grand doing the, the work on it and the, the benefit went to the city to get the, the, uh, the path through there. That could still be used. Um, at some point, and I don't know, you know, you could put bandstands in there, but it could be used for not only the construction of the park or the diversion, but also to build it up and maybe you have a small takeout there. Um, there's a lot of potential, and so really study that map, and I think, I think you guys are right. For right now, let's not even look at Black Hills. Put your hand over that part of the map, but look at the rest of it. There's still huge potential, even if you take Black Hills out of it. <coughs> Mr. Meisner. Well, I'm assuming I can say these things, and I'm going to say them. I mean, the problem we have with Black Hills is if they give it to us tomorrow, the restrictions on that, we essentially can't do anything. So to get the restrictions removed, you're talking about getting it down to bedrock or doing something else. We're talking about spending tons of time and somewhat large amounts of money to just get the property ready to do something. But if they gave it to us tomorrow, we really couldn't do anything with it. Because if you move any soil on that land, you've got to go through this plan. So it's essentially worthless to us, in my opinion. We need to look at a different alternative that gives us something that we can move forward with. And I kind of think that's what I'm, that's what I'm attempting to say, right. is you could literally remove Black Hills out of the picture and we could still have a diversion and we still have the south side of the river. Ms. Smith? Okay, so moving to the south side of the river and the potential for a, co a collaborative project to work together on. Um, as Commissioner Payne said, he can't do it as a commissioner because it's a county project. It's in city property. We kind of need to kind of be the lead to carry this forward if we wish to, but it would be something that we would work together in tandem with. And Chelsea and Bob, can you kind of expand on that, the stakeholders that would be together? And, and I've been trying to pull up that study that could have the price on there, but the internet is really bad. And I'm not pulling it up. So <laughs> with not knowing the price, but we also, but we do know that even if we can find grant money, there will be some matches that would be required. So can you expand on that, please? Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I would say, uh, first, the ditch company. Without the ditch company, we don't have a project. And at this time, we don't have the ditch company. That's always been one of the issues. Now, 
Why can we maybe that? get them on board? Excuse me. Why, why is that? Because they, they have operated this diversion the same way for 150 years. And they um, see no need. For we're from, them, the, we're from the government. We're here to help. <laughs> and they don't like to hear that. For them, they feel like they, uh, they like the flexibility of being able to go out there, build it up, take it down, and be able to get their water. I mean, their primary objective is to get the water to the water rights owners who are on that ditch, right? right? I understand that. Um, with that said, I, I, I feel like they, you know, I, I've sat down with them, talked to them a little bit, um, that they, you know, they want to try to provide some support so there's boater safety. So what they've talked to me about was um, the boat chute itself. The last time I talked to them, they were not interested in um, changing their diversion structure at this time. And maybe this just means that this is the beginning of some of the conversations. I mean, if this is the project that we are again going to focus on, I don't mind reaching out and talking to them again. But even more so than um, bringing other stakeholders on board, we have to have them on board first. I mean, they, they're the owners of the diversion. Um, Potentially, if we bring them some uh, different designs, and we've done a few of these, they've done one themselves with some engineers. There's a couple different cost estimates out there. At one point, they were coming to the table as long as um, they could choose the engineer who would design the diversion structure. So maybe that's the right path uh, that we move down again. Um, and I would be happy to explore that through ARWIC um, and I think having you know the city council on board saying, hey, we think this is a good project, and this is something we want to look at. Uh, can we you know figure something out with the ditch company? Um, you know that might that might help push this project along, you know more quickly. I think you know more support the better. And then uh, when we get to a place where I think we're all at least we have the ditch company on board, if they get on board, <laughs> then. Um, then we could say, okay, this is what we think, you know, cost estimates, this is what the design's gonna look like, this is the, you know, construction, and what funding is available. But I'm very reluctant to, you know, get too far ahead of myself without having the ditch company on board. Okay, Mr. Arquez? Uh, yeah, based on what you said and whatever, you know, and I, I agree, you know, we can look at the south end, but she just brought up the key issue Manny brought it up earlier with the, with the board and all that. Until we can get their board to say, okay, we'll look at it with possible solutions and outcomes. Until then, that it's not going to get work. But I think if we could at least get their board to say, okay, you're presenting something that might possibly work, and they'll look at it whether or not they'll get a board on it. Because when we look at that part, if they get on board, there's going to be, in a sense, advantages for them, but there's also going to be cost to do some of the things that we would have to do to uh, do the stuff that Manny's talking about with the diversion part of it and everything. But at least, at least, if you can convince that board to say, okay, we're open to discussions, further discussion to see how it benefits us as the ditch company benefits everybody around. Then she's got a starting point and we have a starting point to work with to also. Okay, Mr. Meisner. You've summarized that very well. Just, just and I don't Manny, need to carry it minute. any further. Just yeah. please, just a minute, Mr. Meisner. I mean, if, in my opinion, if we can move away from Black Hills and concentrate on something else that has some potential, we need a, I'm not interested in paying for another study, but somebody putting together a master plan that says this is what the whole project would look like and and move forward with trying to reach out to the ditch company and and reach some kind of resolution I mean that's where we need to move Manny, I think uh, Mr. Meisner we can do that and I think we can get a plan for that I know that Tim Payne loves plans and studies and so he'd be more than willing to uh, assist us in uh, finding out what needs to be done there for that plan and what the cost would be with it. Quite frankly, if you look at the south side, there's a tremendous amount of potential uh, staying away from Black Hills. Somewhere down in the future, if we look at the north side, and it, that might not be 
today or tomorrow or the next 10 years, but I assure you that would be a whitewater park that would be off the map. Okay, Bob? I think, I think you're going in a good direction because it looks like Black Hills is very difficult. And you have a lot of other things in this vision plan. I think there's the whole master plan that ties the river walk into even farther upstream. You built that bridge. Where's that go? You know, you want to tie in Tunnel Drive to the River Walk. You got, you know, the, the Whitewater Park. Um, the other piece, another hat that I could put on would be the Aroa hat for the Arkansas River Outfitters are very interested in supporting another takeout below where the Pink House is because right now we're paying $27,000, $28,000 a year in a lease to take out there when we run in a state park. And uh, so having this south side piece, the, the original reason we looked at that was, hey, we need something other than being sort of held hostage with this lease that we have at the Pink House, which don't get me wrong, we get along with her great with Ann Brown, but to have something down below that was part of the whole vision that you have for Canyon City, it's a, another win-win situation as far as potential projects and so maybe we need to for us go back and look at that to figure out how to partner with you on doing something on that south side i mean that's what i'm hearing is there's very deep concerns and it's going to be a long time to deal with black hills but let's move forward with some of these other things like what will's talking about and what manny are talking about with the ditch the south side we have a river access we take away the liability of what that ditch is creating right now, and then you work your way upstream, it, whatever time frame that happens on the Black Hills side. But then you've still got the bridge to go across, Tunnel Drive. I mean, it, it still fits kind of the piece that I see in your vision. Is that, is that correct? Would that be a correct statement, that that would potentially yes. work? Yes. Yeah, I think I think we're at the point where we can kind of give a thumbs up. We we do a kind of an unofficial thumbs up. Yeah. Do you have a support? Should we be moving forward on what we've talked about this afternoon? And I, th I think we've arrived well, maybe to that. I mean, is this even a conversation we can have until the ditch company is on board? Well, that's well, the that's point. They want to know: are are we interested enough that they should go to the ditch company yeah. and start working on a, on a solution? Okay, Mr. Hammer. For them. So the I guess the the. If we're talking about a project, and if we're just looking at the south side right now, or diversion, uh, some some diversion project in the river, the I think the issue for the ditch board would be what share they would pay, and I think that and and I'm assuming I'm assuming that that is um, you know what what their concern is. Uh, I mean, there's you can you can. <coughs> Look at it as as a as a whole spectrum. Everything from the ditch company pays 100% to the other side of that, where a white knight comes in and pays 100% of whatever's needed. Ashley. Does someone know whether that is indeed the <laughs> the case? As is that is the the concern of the ditch board? The I think cost. there's always got to be matching funds, right, Chelsea? I mean, there's like nobody wants to do 100%. <coughs> Well, yeah, yes, absolutely, that's one of their concerns, is um, funding for it. Um, and they've been pretty clear, you know, that they uh, feel like if they did a partnership that they are looking for other people to help support the change of something that they don't even want to change. Right, I agree. Um, with, I mean, I guess we're back to, I, I would say to your question about studies and you know everything like that, there's been a lot of studies done on this. We've done different designs, we have cost estimates, but it comes back to this um, you know, stakeholder engagement, getting people on board and where can we find a win-win and then that's where I can come in too and look at other funding options. You know, what are all the grants out there? What are the different partners that we can pull into this to help pay for it? So it does minimize the cost for everybody involved. Um, but again, uh, you know, I have to start with the ditch company and get them on board. Uh, the more support from outside uh, entities and groups and, um, you know, the city council, I think that just helps our chances of being able to have those conversations and, and hopefully move this forward. Uh, but I guess that's where we're at right now. So there wouldn't be more necessarily more studies on it. We may have to do another 
design if we get the okay from the ditch company and maybe we take this you know step by step it might be you know first a 30 percent design and a feasibility study okay what is it going to cost what is it going to look like then we come back together and say okay we're all happy with this and then move into construction you know maybe we might have to piece it out a little bit to um, make sure that everybody's on the same page and, and happy with the progress we're making with this project okay mr mr Payne. well uh a couple years ago, uh, Chelsea's predecessor who worked on this project, uh, Gary Barber, he was a projects coordinator for Arkansas River Roundtable, had several conversations with the Oil Creek Board. And Manic, you can uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, he got to the point where they could choose the engineer on the, on the design and they didn't have any cost. It didn't cost them anything. And that was what we went by as stakeholders in the conversation that the Oil Creek Board wouldn't put any money into this. And so that's, I think that's, what, well, Jim, we're going to have, no, no, you have to start I somewhere. I agree. I mean, if, yeah. if they have absolutely no ad advantage for making a change, why would they put out money? Well, I right. Mean, and so you I, have to I go agree. with the assumption that they're not going to put out any money. Okay, that means everybody else is going to have to. I agree. And, okay. and I think all well, of us in this room is going to have to have that assumption okay. as well. Jim, just, just I'm sorry, please. I disagree well, with you. Wait a minute. The Mr. ditch company Manning. has a right to be in this because there's a safety issue there and liability, and they cannot see that. That board does not see it. They need to wake up. There's a liability issue there that bothers me being on that board, and I'm one of five people on that board. And I think that if we look at this, uh, it's always been a three to two vote, and it may change because we have new members on that board and we'll have a meeting sometime in January and we'll see what the outcome will be. But you have gotta look at the liability of that diversion dam. Granted, nobody has drowned in it to a date that we know of, but it sure could happen. And as we get the traffic on it like we have had, there's a good, light, good chance that we're gonna be in the middle of it. Whose dam is okay. it? Well, it's theirs, it's the ditch. It's the ditches. It's your dam and your liability. Why don't you change it? <laughs> okay. Let's not get out of hand here. Um, did I see a hand up front? Did you want to say something? Yeah, no? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's obvious. Yeah. The other question I have is, you still lease the pink house yes. thing? Oh, I thought she wasn't going to do that anymore. No, the Outfitters lease, lease it. Aroa leases it. You have to be a member of Aroa to take out there. Not all the Outfitters that run okay. the Arkansas River take out there. Well, I was under the impression she was not going to do that anymore. She... Well, not to the public. She, yeah, she's Got not it. involved okay. with CPW. Okay. So... So, the other thing, just real quick with the... Um, with the south side, I heard somebody mention about the ditch tying into it. I think you could do the south side project without the ditch. So as we break down all these pieces, you know, eating that elephant one bite at a time, basically, and the Black Hills where it seemed to getting a clear understanding of where you at, you're at with that. The ditch company needs the ditch on board. Nothing moves without them. But the south side's kind of intriguing to me right now with you know that potential. And, okay. and you're saying there's funds available to help make that happen? So that well, we haven't even ever looked at that from the round table, so I don't know, Chelsea, or maybe CPW, I don't know, Rob, is that, if there's funds available for the south side? When you say the south side. Well, the south side is, I don't know how we even describe that, because I didn't know we were going to talk about that, Will, but you're right. I mean, Aroa threw $10,000 at that, the, about the feasibility of could we turn this into an access, a river access, a put in, take out, open you know, to whoever. It's like if we bought the property and did the work, it would be private. Again, another Aroa situation. But if we did it so that it became a public situation where it was tied into Canyon City's vision, then it's open to everybody and the outfitters could take out there and not have to pay the lease just right up the road. So. I mean, we could go back and start exploring that, but I think all these pieces are different, and they all have different players. And I can't reiterate more than what Chelsea was saying. We're not here to try to, to run a project. Um, we're here to help, but somebody has to want to do it, 
Oil Creek has to want to do it. You have to do what you need to do, and we could help you with that. But the south side could be a little different. You know, it's like maybe it's something we do on our own, but we'd rather do it with you. Okay. When I say we, I mean AROA. So now we're talking two different groups, too, or I am in representation. So if you're interested in that, I think it ties into the big plan, but also the beautification of that part of Canyon is quite ugly. You know, a lot of outfitters and boaters don't want to go past the pink house because it's just this industrial zone where you've beautified the river walk is incredible, an incredible resource for the community. So the community has a piece in this and in what makes sense for the community. It's like, yeah, everybody's engaged. You, you see the turnouts of your events down there. It's incredible. Okay. Thank you. So we need to get, yes, sir. Council, my name is Rob White. I'm the park manager of the Arkansas Headwaters Recreation Area, and I just wanted to maybe tie, put a bow on this for everyone. Um, number one, approximately 10 years ago, we initiated a study to look at four different diversions on the Arkansas River that were problematic to boaters or potentially could cause a fatality. And that study was initiated because of the fact that we did have a fatality in Chafee County at one of our diversions. Um, of those four diversions, one has been completely rebuilt with a boat chute and fish ladder. And the second one uh, in Chafee County will be completed by November of uh, 2019. So we've knocked out two of the four. The two that remain are Oil Creek and the hydraulic. And so we as an agency remain interested in working with what other, what other entities that we can work with to make improvements at those two diversions. And I agree um, with Chelsea that the number one thing that we need to get lined up is the assistance of the two boards for those two ditches and um, I would like to let the uh, council know that when we made improvements at the Helena diversion the ditch company did not contribute any funds towards that improvement. Um, we wanted to do it because of boater safety reasons. We did improve the diversion for them as part of that but they did not put any cash towards that project. In regards to the south side of, um, as a potential takeout or put in, we as an agency did look at that. Um, it's rather small, and so when the opportunity came up that we could potentially have a site on the north side of the river, Black Hills, we kind of shifted our attention from the south side to the north side. If the north side is going to be problematic, and it certainly sounds as that's the case, um, I think we'd be willing to take another look at the south side. And as I mentioned, we don't have funding available for that now, but it is something that we could plan for if the interest was there. So I wanted to let you know from CPW standpoint and from the Arkansas Headwaters mm -hmm. standpoint that we remain interested in both projects, the diversions and the south side, if that is the direction that council would like to move. Thank you. So what, let's get down to who the players would be to get together with the ditch companies. Someone from city council, you two, a commissioner. Who are those people that we could say to sit down and have that discussion? Don't all talk at once. <laughs> We're willing. <laughs> I think that would be a good start. I mean, okay. I don't think we need to, you know, have a large gang of people going there. That usually doesn't work. Okay. Um, you know, even starting even smaller. I mean, you know, I, I had talked to them. Um, gosh, I, I feel like it was last you know winter sometimes so you know maybe it's just starting those conversations again okay. and saying hey there's interest again in this you know we want to look back at this I have um, we could even I, I have the documents from the engineers who put together the last study that the ditch company had them put together the one that um, Commissioner Payne was talking about I could even bring that and say hey is this still something that you know you want to look at and and start there um, if if that's okay with the council, um, and then you know I could bring in a, you know um, Council Member Smith and I'd be happy to and uh, Bob Hamill and you know maybe Commissioner Payne to come in and you know say hey these are the other folks who were really interested in this and we want to see how we can move it forward. So you're saying is those people you just mentioned? Thanks for volunteering. <laughs> we'll, you like how I did that? <laughs> we'll contact. Let's put Manny Colon on it too. But who? <laughs> Someone was volunteering. Will. Cool. He's already on it. That's yeah. right. So, the three of you and Miss Smith, and maybe Will. And Will. Yeah. Yes. Come on out. 
Oh, time's up. No. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. Uh, my name is Chris Moffitt. Uh, I work with the Royal Gorge Whitewater Festival. Um, I'm a whitewater event coordinator. Um, I work with Warren over here on the Whitewater Festival. Um, and uh, this south side that you guys are referring to is very dangerous. I just want to uh, confirm that. If everybody holds up their finger, right, there's a piece of rebar that's sticking up right out of the river just like that on River Right that could uh, really mess someone up. And that's actually the point of the river where they're talking about doing this remediation. Um, so I can't, the Royal Gorge Whitewater Festival um, board is in transition currently. Actually, October 13th, we're having a meeting to assign officers. We're becoming a 501c3. Um, we're doing a lot of stuff like that. And I'm kind of hesitant to say, like, we'll do this, but because I can't speak for everybody currently because we're in transition. But um, I mean, I would like to help as a member of uh, Royal Gorge Whitewater Festival, which will become Royal Gorge Whitewater Foundation. Um, its interests are, you know, um, remediation of the Whitewater Corridor through Canyon City, um, furthering whitewater recreation in Canyon City, and uh, other such things. We actually just became Team USA. I don't know if you guys know that for under 19 high school kids in Canyon City. So um, we're moving forward. And uh, so I guess I'd just like to throw my hat in the ring there. So thanks. That okay. was real quick, right? Yeah, but thank you. Yeah. Um, so let's try to get to a point here. We, we have you three. Will Colin, is that correct? And, and Ashley? <laughs> and could you set a time and, and sit down and see if we could talk? You can talk to the dish company with your plan. And then let's talk. And is council OK with that? Thumbs yeah, up? Get something going. Yeah. Is everybody OK Besides with Black that? Hills. I see lots yeah. of thumbs. Is that your thumb? or Thank you. So there, you in case. Do you send you one? I'll take your phone. <laughs> okay, so you do have the backing from the council. I think it, it's reasonable, uh, but I, I just like to add myself, we're not giving up on Black Hills. There, there's got to be a way to make that work. But in the meantime, I think this is a good alternative for us to pursue, and we're in favor of it. Okay? Thank you. Sure. Just please come back and let us know where you need help or what you need. Okay. Can and, we set uh, a can we set some kind of time frame here so we're not Well, let them do it. It kind of depends on what yeah. happens. Here. I know, but yeah. Before yeah, the Black that. Hills. So, we're all in agreement. <laughs> we're going to we're going <laughs> to We'll gonna, have it next I, week, Jim. That hurt. We're going to sit and talk. You're going to get with the the ditch company. See what their time frame is. It's mm -hmm. going to be on the south side and uh, we'll all get together again and talk about it. Sounds okay? good. Let's good. Do it. Thanks right. to you and to everyone that yeah, came thanks. tonight. Thank you. And, and I'd like to congratulate the Whitewater Festival. I'd, I'd like to see it just explode, which is great. And uh, I'm a big supporter of it, even though kayaks scare the daylights out of me. <laughs> Why do you go upside down in those anyway? Count me as a spectator. <laughs> okay, that, you don't want I, to see him in a Speedo. So, no. <laughs> We've seen it once. I sent him back because my name wasn't on it. It just said Speedo, so I sent him back. They weren't mine. Okay. Thank you. I guess we're adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.